Hey guys, today I'm gonna to do a quick video on shortcuts in Logic Pro 10. And as we know, Logic Pro 10 just had a major update with live loops and other new functions and everyone's excited about it. And I hope you guys have been using it and exploring different uh, uh, options there or functions with Logic Pro 10 and make some great music. But today I'm gonna to focus on shortcuts because I think it's very important, especially when we are uh, we wanna be more efficient in our workflow. Uh, some of the shortcuts that I use all the time, I'm uh, I'm gonna share with you today. And make sure you like and subscribe my channel to help me make more content and share more tips with you guys. Now, without further ado, I'm just gonna talk about uh, shortcuts today now. Uh, some shortcuts are very simple with uh, one keystroke and it's very, very useful. As you can see from the screen here, I have a very clean screen without any um, buttons on top to tempt you know, so that I'm not tempted to use my mouse, drag my mouse to click on the stop or play or record button. I can just use my keyboard uh, like spacebar and, you know, to start and spacebar to stop. But of course, but of course, or you already know about that. And for example, record and you can just press R and you can record whatever um, uh, track you're on. There are different types of um, uh, functions and shortcuts in Logic Pro 10 and there's no way I'm going to cover all of them or use all of them, but I'm going to share with you some major ones. For example, K is for the metronome. Sometimes when you are recording or when you are playing, uh, the metronome is going to be there and you want to get rid of it, just press, click, uh, just press K without dragging your mouse to click it away or anything. Another one is, for example, X is for the mixer. And if you have multiple screen, you can always use Command-2 to get another one, to get an extra window and drag it to your uh, extra display so that you can have your mixer all the time. Similarly, if you, have, uh, if you want your piano roll to edit your MIDI notes, you can press P and Command-4 to get an extra window and drag it to your uh, display, another display, and you can have it on all the time. If you use Logic Pro 10 or their stock library, you can press Y to open the library and select whatever instrument you want to use. Pretty handy. Well, right now I have Alchemy here. And if I want to have another track, I can just use Command D, duplicate it, and then I can pick from the library session here. Let's say I want a piano or, or maybe not a piano, I can use, I can pick something else, maybe studio string, viola, and then voila, there we go. So press Y, the, li the library goes away. If you don't want this strip here with all the plugins, plugins and all that, let's say you have uh, your mixer on already and it's already here, you can press I to get rid of it. it gives you more space to work with, okay? So something very useful. Now, uh, let's talk about this side. We have I, we have Y, you know, these windows. How about this side? This side we have F to browse whatever files your computer, you know, uh, in your computer you may have. And you can quickly drag whatever you, uh, you are using, you know, into your uh, work space here. Or you can use, let's say, O, which is your loops, uh, your loop library and you can drag it and there we go. So it's pretty handy to know these um, shortcuts to get access to the files that you're looking for. Now, single keystrokes, I think I have done most of that already. And I also talk about the command D, which is duplicate your track. And uh, let's move on. Now I have the violas here. Let's say I want to play something. I don't have my MIDI keyboard handy. What do I do? Let's say I'm on my laptop, for uh, for example. I can use Command K to get the keyboard as uh, to use my keyboard as my MIDI keyboard and play some notes. Okay, I play a tune, but I forgot to press record. What am I gonna do, right? Now, with the new updates, the playhead doesn't even have to move. Logic Pro 10 already recorded your performance. You just have to use Shift R and your performance is right there. It's already recorded by, um, by Logic. And 
It looked a little bit funny because my loop was on, so I just press L and it goes away. It's back to my single region, okay? And uh, I go to piano roll, and I can press Q to quantize it, quantize my performance, and get rid of the piano roll. This is my symbol region, which I'm going to use later. But uh, another tip for you guys, this is not shortcuts, but let's go to the file. It's uh, project setting, MIDI. Make sure you have the chase on the notes so that when we are playing something, you see this region here, the MIDI notes already started. So normally I have to play from the beginning to hear this note. But now with a chase on, see, right in the middle, I can still hear the, the sound of it. So it's pretty handy. So you know where to get it. Now my metronome was on, quite annoying sometimes when I don't need it. I just press K to get away. Now it's not about the performance or uh, how realistic the, uh, the MIDI notes is because uh, this is about shortcuts. Okay, moving on. Um, okay, zoom in and out. I can press Z to zoom into a region or an audio region, okay? And then press Z to zoom out again. And then command arrow keys is a more controlled zoom in and out. Command up and down, zoom in and out, and left command left and right is stretching, it's still zooming, okay? Zooming um, horizontally, okay? And then command up and down and zooming vertically. You can also use option, hold your option button, and then scroll your mouse up and down, left and right, or option command up and down will be the same as option left and right. Okay, some zooming function is pretty handy, okay? Now, uh, okay, moving the playhead. Sometimes we want to move the playhead. Uh, we can use the arrow, not the arrow, but the open triangular bracket button, which is comma and period button. Okay, and then you can have your playhead uh, moving by bars. And I want to loop this region, command U, and then your loop is on. We'll loop this region, there we go. Okay, just click on whatever region you want to loop. Okay, and then C is to get rid of the loop. Okay, C is for cycle. Get rid of the yellow bar. Now, sometimes we want to have, um, let's, let, let me have another track here. I'm gonna play the piano now. Okay, again, I didn't record it, but no worries. Get rid of the uh, keyboard by pressing Command K, Shift R, and my performance back. And there we go. Now, uh, let's say for the piano part, I actually want a different color. Okay, so Option C, pick purple, and this one is blue. Okay, and then Option C to get it away. Now, these regions are these two regions here, but in the mixer itself, the head, uh, the track is not the same color as the region. Okay, and of course, you can change the regions same as the track colors. Okay, the track colors are green right now. I can use Shift Option C change it to whatever color I have for the track, okay? Or and shift option N to name my uh, region same as the track color, uh, the track name. Now, what, a, what about the other way? I want, to, uh, I want to color the tracks same as my region. So first of all, let's undo whatever I have done to undo, okay? Now, select these two tracks, Shift, um, Shift, Option, Command, C. Now the track are labeled or are, are colored 
with the same color as my region. So it's another way of doing it, okay? I know this option is not in the, uh, in the uh, menu function here, so it's quite handy if you memorize that as well. Okay, now uh, let's see what other uh, fun ones or what other good ones that I always do. Uh, let's say I love this region so much, okay, this section, the first four bars. Let's say I really, really like them. I want to repeat them. Repeat the whole section is Control Command R. So I'm copying the whole thing again, again, and again. And how about we go into the region here? Now you see all these notes, they are all detached, right? So Option A to highlight all of them, to select all of them. Shift backslash, and we get all the notes to extend it to the length uh, until the next note. So it's pretty handy to uh, create legato uh, performance. Sometimes when we are working with tracks, we want to create track stacks, okay? Without going into like right click and select uh, uh, create track stack, there we go. There's actually shift option D and then just hit enter. We get a track stack created. And then option C again, we will just make the region, uh, let's say green this time, or actually let's try another color, orange, okay? And shift option command C, then we label, uh, we, we color the track same as the region color. Now, sometimes when people are looking to make or they're trying to make like EDM music or some music that you need to reverse the, um, the audio region, right? So now, let's single this by pressing S. Okay, this is symbol. But we want to make it into a riser by reversing the, the audio region. So how do we do that? Is there a shortcut for it? Of course there is, right? And the shortcut for that is shift Control r You can actually see the wave here. If you press shift Control r it's reversed. So now you have a riser, okay? It's very useful, very handy if you are working with wave file a lot, okay? And uh, for some reason, this function is not in the menu that it used to be, okay? Now, and of course, let's say I want to have this track bounced. I can do Control B to bounce this region or whatever is highlighted in place. Then we have a new track that we can just work on. Let's say I just select this one. Then it's only this region bounced in place into next track. So we can just work on that. How? Why do we do that? Because sometimes we want to save uh, CPU power. Uh, we have already got all the, um, uh, for example, all these plugins already there, and we don't want to waste CPU power, we're not going to change anything, we can just bounce that region and make it into a WAV file and just work with that. Now talking about plugins, and of course, let's say sometimes we're working on a lot of different uh, plugins, and they are just everywhere. Can be quite messy and it's blocking my view, okay? I cannot see the, uh, the screen there now. So what we can do is just one shortcut, V, so that we can see whatever is going on here in the workspace. And it's quick shortcut, V, and then we get all the plugins back, okay? And shift click, then we close, actually close all the plugin windows. So there's a lot of different useful shortcuts that you can actually um, incorporate into your workflow to make it more, much more efficient, okay? And hopefully, um, 
these are the the the, uh, the shortcuts that I'm going to talk about in this video, and of course there are a lot of more more different ones. And for example, some bonus ones because of the updates. Now we have option V to change the views between live loops and our normal track window, or option B to have a split one. Okay, so it's very useful um, shortcuts. Okay. And when we are dropping, for example, I'm just messing around with my with these files, with these loops. Okay, let's say I drop these here. So it's very useful uh, shortcuts today. Um, majority of the time, it applies to this side of the window rather than the uh, live loops. Uh, when we're working on live loops, I prefer using, uh, for example, a, a phone or iPad so that I can actually touch screen into different cells so that I can just play the cell without dragging my mouse. But of course, that is another video. So hopefully you guys like whatever uh, I have talked about this time. And uh, hopefully the tips going to be very useful for you guys to increase your workflow and uh, bring efficiency to your uh, production. Okay, so remember to like and subscribe my video and uh, I'll see you next time. Ciao.